Hey there, so my motor for Diane finally came in, so I thought we'd go through a little bit of an unboxing and the installation of the motor, which I'm hoping will be fairly straightforward because I did some checking while it was on its way here, and I think the bolts that are already mounted in this table are already the right uh, configuration for this motor, so it should be fairly simple. But let's see what we got here. On top, it looks like instructions on how to use the motor as far as setting the RPM and restoring factory settings and a few things like that. Got linkage for our pedal, which I'm very glad about because I was worried I was going to find this. Looks like a belt cover. Random odds and ends for installing the motor. The motor itself, which I am super impressed that this motor is as small as it is and as powerful as it is because the the one on my other table that didn't work out is literally probably three times as long as this and definitely four or five times as heavy. So this is another advantage of a servo motor is that it's very light and should be a lot easier to install this way. This looks to be our control box. So that'll end up getting mounted probably right over here. Then we have our mounting bracket and it looks like our linkage for the motor. There is, however, no instructions on how to install this motor, so I guess I'll do my best and I'll get back to you. All right, so after climbing underneath my table, um, these are the original bolts that were already in the table, and I was right that the pattern for me actually matches up to this bracket perfectly, so I'm in the clear there, so I don't have to drill any new holes. Uh, I don't have bolts for these, or not bolts, I don't have nuts for these, and the nuts that came with the machine, or not with the machine, but the motor, didn't just screw right on here. They got a little ways on and then stopped. I'm not sure if that's because these bolts are gummed up or what, but these here are a little bit shorter, and it was easier to just knock these out than worry about whether or not they were going to cross that or anything. And plus, this way I don't have an extra bit of bolt sticking out the bottom that I don't need. This kit also came with, looks like, three rubber feet that I'm guessing go between the table and the motor to kind of uh, mitigate vibrations. So I will uh, get that installed and then get you a shot of that. All right, so I've got the bracket installed here. And the other thing I forgot to mention is there, were, there was uh, three flange washers and three lock washers in the kit as well. I put those on this side of the bracket here so everything should lock down. Uh, for me, I had to go ahead and, uh, and tighten these bolts down without the lock washer first just to get the carriage bolts set. But once they were set, there was plenty to get that on there. It's still a little loose, or at least not as tight as I planned to leave it because I'm going to have to move this to the right and left here to get the motor to line up. But first, I have to get the motor mounted up about like so. And for that, I'm gonna use this big old bolt that came with it. There's also a flange washer and a lock washer for it. And for anybody that's wondering, these nuts right here were 14 millimeter. So I will get the motor on there and we will see in a little bit. All right, so here it is installed. I got, I managed to find a belt that is the right uh, length. And then what surprised me, I figured that most of this belt tension would be from the weight of the motor, but I guess the motor's too light. So you do have to tighten this nut back here, this bolt back here, which is like a 22 millimeter. I didn't have a open-ended wrench that size, so I had to use a socket. And it's really hard to get past this cover right here with that. So if you're doing this, make it, it really helped to have a open-ended 22 millimeter here. And then also for right here, I had to go find an open-ended 14 millimeter wrench because I could not get a socket up in there. So that's just something to be aware of. I've got everything melt belted now, and I think I think the tension is good. I don't know. Time will tell. So I will get the control box installed and the linkage installed, and I will get back to you. All right, so quick update here. In order to get the cover here to 
work properly with the belt and the table, I had to adjust this plate right here, this, pl this plastic plate. And this would be one of my big, I guess, annoyances about this motor. I mean, everything else has been super simple. But in order to get to these screws back here to put this plate on, I had to take the pulley off. Granted, a 19 millimeter socket, and it was pretty easy, but I just feel like this could be moved or done better. I don't know, maybe if my table's a little bit different, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, just for anybody that knows, also there's a, a screw back here that goes through that hole right there to hold the cover on once you get it on there. So I'm gonna get my belt back on here and then I'll get back to you when I've got the rest of this assembled. All right, so I've got the linkage installed here. I had to go ahead and move my foot pedal over one slot, but that wasn't a super huge deal other than getting everything cleaned up. And then this linkage here. So these here are 10 millimeter nuts on here and here. And this one here, I believe is a 12. Yes, it is, it's a 12. So, and then I just, Got it set about where I wanted it and cinched this down good and hard. And then I tightened these set nuts here and here. I don't know if this is exactly where I'm gonna wanna have everything, but I it feels about right and I can always adjust that if I need to. Okay, so for the cable management, they send you these dinky little plastic things with a nail on them. Come on, camera focus. There we go. And I bash my fingers trying to get these installed on the table, but the weird part is also they give you four of them, but there's three wires coming out of the back of the box, so I'm not sure how they expect you to do that. So what I opted for, if I can get to focus, I don't know if you can see it right back here, I put a couple of eye bolts in the bottom of the table and then use the twist ties that came with the unit. I might eventually swap those out for zip ties. I don't know, but right now that should work just fine. And I was able to get this plenty tight and get the cover on correctly. So all that's left now is to test her out. All right, so for this first test, I've got it set at uh, 500 RPM. So we'll hopefully just go nice and slow and see how she does. Oh, getting hung up on something here. All right, so it wasn't a bobbin issue. I missed a tensioning disc when I was threading the machine. So let's hold on to here. Let's just see how she does. Oh, that feels pretty good. Looks like I got my tension about right. So let's just see how we can do at high speed. Well, that looks pretty good. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my speed up here a little bit. Well, she, see how she does at a, at a, a thousand RPM. Looks like we're doing good. Let's go all the way up. All right, so now we're set at 4,500 RPM. Whoa! I don't think I'll be sewing at that speed anytime soon. But, it looks like oops, it sewed all that just fine, regardless of speed. So if you found this video helpful or informative, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.